Hey y'all, it's Sharon with Living the Good Life. I'm back again. <laughs> this episode, I'm going to share with you three top tips for living the good life. But before I get into today's uh, uh, material, I want to thank you for uh, watching these videos, subscribing to our YouTube channel, uh, Be Authentically You. And if you haven't already, please do so. Also, push that bell icon. That way you will receive notification when we upload a video or a podcast. Another thing I'd like to encourage you to do is to give us a thumbs up if this material blesses you, ministers to you, uh, and then also pass it along so that other people can be encouraged as well. One other thing that would be great uh, for us if you would actually leave us a comment. Tell us what you think about the program, uh, the, the material on living the good life, and uh, we would love to interact with you. We want to begin to build a community of people that are seeking uh, the good life, that are seeking after the kingdom of God. So, but before I get started on sharing the top three tips on how I live a good life and how you can live a good life too, I actually want to tell you what a good life in my definition means, okay? First of all, when I talk about living a good life, I'm talking about living life according to biblical principles, living in the kingdom of God. God has provided things for his people, and one of those is to walk in abundant life, to live a good life, inherit the good land. So that's what this show is about. Um, and you know, the word good appears many times in the scriptures, but the very first time it appears is in Genesis 1, 4, when it's talking about the things that God made. God is the creator and in Genesis 1, we find out of all the things that God created. He created the earth. He created the sun and the moons and the stars. He created the firmament. He created male and female. He created all those things. And after each time that he created something, God said, it is good. So God saw his creation as good. That included mankind, human beings. God said we were created in his image and his likeness. Therefore, we were created to be good and to live a good life. So that's the, the foundation of what it means to live a good life, to understand first and foremost who created us and he created us to enjoy a good life. Well, I think I've shared with you before this definition, but I'm going to share with you again, and probably I'll share with you lots of other times so you can really get it, the meaning of the Hebrew word good. Okay, it's in the Old Testament, and the, old, the, the Hebrew alphabet is made up of letters, numbers, and pictures. Okay, so the word good has two uh, pictures or pictographs that go along with it to help describe what good is. And the first pictograph is a basket. And the second one is surround the house. So you think about a basket, right? And you put something inside the basket and the thing you put inside the basket is now surrounded. Well, that's what God says when he releases goodness to us. This is the meaning of good that he wants to surround our house, your and my house, with grace, with beauty, with love, with health, with prosperity, something that's functional. In other words, we don't have to wait in the sweet by and by to receive these things. We can receive them in the here and now. Goodness. I am experience God's love, his grace, his beauty, his health, his prosperity right here, right now in my life. And you can too. So I told you I would give you three top tips 
to know and walk in a good life. Well, the tip number one is you got to know the God of goodness. You got to know the God of goodness. You know, I'm really a studier of the word and I like to look at the Hebrew and the Greek and find out what they, they mean because in our English definitions, sometimes our meanings are very, um, well, they don't have a lot of real ump to them. That's why the Hebrew alphabet has pictures and letters and, and, and uh, numbers because it can really give you a full meaning of what God is saying. Well, you know, the word know, when I say you got to know, that word is made up of two words also, see and knowledge. And it, it's a, the pictograph is the pict, a pictograph of a door and the eye. In order to know the God of goodness, we got to walk through the door, which is Jesus. And then our eyes will be open so that we can actually have an experience and a knowledge of the God of goodness. If you don't get anything else out of this series, I want you to know that God is good. You know, I shared with you a few weeks ago that there's a scripture that says that God is good to all, that his goodness is not distinguished between someone who, who, is a, who lives a, a righteous life or who doesn't live a righteous life. That God is good to all mankind, that he created man and, and uh, man meaning human beings and, and after his likeness, and he wants to be good to every single person. So he wants us to have an intimate relationship with him. He wants us to come to know him, to really live the good life. We must know our creator. And there's a few scriptures I want to share with you about that. And Psalms 103 verse, Psalms 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. We are his and we are his people. Psalms 34, 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. God wants you and I to taste and see that he is good. He wants us to know that he's good. And then John three sixteen really sums it all up. In the Passion Translation, it reads, For here is the way God loved the world. He gave his only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will not perish, but experience everlasting life. Well, you're going to see in tip number three that knowing Jesus produces and allows us to know and live in a life of goodness, a full life. John 17, 3 says, And this is eternal life, that we may know you, the only true God, and Yeshua, the Messiah, the one you sent. Okay, so tip number one, to live the good life, the kingdom life, we got to know the God of goodness. And I mean in an intimate way, not just going to church, not just saying you know him through your head, a really heart-to-heart -heart connection, just like you want to have with your, your lover, your husband, someone that you deeply care about, a good friend. You want to know them. You want to know heart and soul. You want to know what they're thinking. You want to connect with them. God wants you and I to connect to him in an intimate way to know him. That's tip number one. Tip number two, he wants you and me to believe that he's for you. Tip number two, God is for you. You got to believe it. I know the world tells us this and that. Our situations and our life, maybe we do some, some wrong things sometimes. And so the enemy and our own thoughts wants us to think, oh, we're not good and, and that God doesn't believe in me anymore and, and he's not going to fulfill his desires, uh, his dreams for my life, his prophetic promises. Friends, that is the farthest thing from the truth. God wants you to believe that he is for you. Psalms 8, uh, Proverbs eight seventeen says, I love those who love me 
and those who seek me will find me. Psalms 56.10 says, Then my enemies will be turned back on the day that I call. This I know that God is for me. You might have a lot of enemies pressing in on you right now, but when you call out to the living God, you can know that he's for you and he's going to come down and he's going to rescue you. Micah 7.7 7 in the Amplified Bible says, But as for me, I will look expectantly for the Lord with confidence in him. I will keep watch. I will wait with confident expectation for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. You must believe that God is for you. If you cry out, he's going to hear and he's going to respond. Tip number three, receive God's promises. Did you have, do you know that you have some promises that in God's word, there's hundreds, thousands, probably of promises that he says he wants to give you, but he's also giving us individuals, prophetic promises. He's given us dreams and visions, things that, that he said he wants to take, that he wants to see take place in our lives. Well, he doesn't want us to um, fall prey of the enemy or even our own thoughts that think our time is up. It's too late. God's promises will not be fulfilled. Friends, I'm here to tell you that we have to believe that God's promises will come into our lives. Romans 5.5 5 says, sure, such hope, such hope in God's promises never disappoints. We've got to continue to expect and hope in what God has promised. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For as many as are the promises of God in Christ, they are all answered yes. And through him, we say our amen to the glory of God. God's promises that he's spoken over your life, God's promises that are within his word are yes and amen for you. You've got to believe it. Tip number three, receive God's promises. Romans 4 is one of my favorite passages of scripture. It's where it talks about Abraham and how he and Sarah believed and hoped against hope, it says, that the promise that God said to them that they would have a son would come to pass. Well, a lot of things happened in their life and they tried to do it on their own and it failed miserably, but God's promise finally came true. And Romans 4.20 says, Yet Abraham and Sarah did not waver in unbelief concerning the promise of God. Rather, he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Don't give up, my friends. Keep believing in God's promises. Well, here are two promises that you can take to the bank that I can guarantee you will be fulfilled in your life. If you receive them, 2 Peter 1, 3, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything you need for life, everything you need to walk a godly life, to live the good life, and to live in the kingdom of God life, God has already promised. He's already fulfilled. He's already put in his word for you to find and begin to do. And then the last scripture I want to leave with you, this is the best one, is John 10, 10. It says that the thief comes to still kill and destroy, but Jesus said, but I came that you might have life and that more abundantly. Friends, over the last few years, there's been a lot of stealing and killing and destroying. They're still taking place today, killing, stealing, and destroying. But Jesus said he came to give us life and that more abundantly. He wants you to know him. He wants you to walk the good life. Living the good life is living the kingdom life. It's living connected to your creator. Number one, know the God of goodness. Number two tip know that he's for you believe it he's for you and number three tip receive the promises that he has spoken over your life i leave you with that i i'm i'm believing god that you're going to come to know him in a greater way that you're going to know that you know that you know that god is for you no matter what's going on in your life and you're going to receive the promises 
that he has spoken over you. Friends, if this video has blessed you, please like it and pass it along. Leave us a comment. We really appreciate it. Until next time, this is Sharon.